there we go. We are now recording. Um, and uh, um, so collections, your virtual collections are due Friday by the end of the day. So um, Friday at 5 p.m. End of, end of uh, regular work day. Um, uh, so that way uh, we will have the weekend to grade your virtual collections. Um, so again, virtual collections are due Friday, uh, the day of exam, uh, July um, 31st. Um, you'll actually have the class period on July 31st to work on your exam, um, but final exams are not due until Sunday. Um, and so, uh, so you don't have to finish them on July 31st. Um, you can just start them. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll be around to answer them. Um, you can polish up your collections in class um, or any of those uh, uh, things. So that is a uh, work period with a focus on the exam. We'll be passing out the exams at the beginning, the final exam at the beginning of class. Um, the final exam is uh, not cumulative. Um, so it will be from uh, these uh, three, these lectures. Um, there is um, there is a quiz today. Um, there is a quiz today, but it is the last quiz. So next week, um, because remember we give you an entire week to finish the quiz, um, there will be no quizzes on those um, on those topics. Um, and then just as a reminder, if you haven't come to see me in office hours, uh, I have office hours today from one to three. And so would be glad to see you. Okay. Um, let us know if you have any questions about that. Okay. So insect development and life histories, I put these up because, um, these are Cordy eggs and, um, they just thought they looked really cute. They look like a Pokemon. Um, and so insect development in life histories starts from um, uh, the egg and then the idea is that it's we're talking about the entire life cycle of um, the insect. And it is really remarkable that you have an object um, like this, the egg, it's exposed to the environment um, and all of the environmental pressures that go along with it at a, such a small scale and small size. Um, and then for this egg to go through the developmental process of turning into um, a remarkably different organism uh, from even its nymphal state or larval state. So this is a leaf-footed corridy. Um, it's a tropical insect, um, really beautiful, highly metallic, um, amazing uh, coloration uh, and interesting life histories. And um, the, the, what we're going to talk about today is some of the key pieces of information um, that take the insect through the entire process of one generation. So from egg uh, back to egg. Um, and a lot of what we're going to talk about is uh, at this point, not new information. So there was an insect physiologist um, uh, who, funnily enough, last name was Wigglesworth. And um, in 1934 is when he discovered um, uh, the essential features of growth and molting in insects and metamorphosis. Um, and he said this thing that I think is really interesting and it's sort of based um, on what my lecture is based on, but it's that the essential feature of insect growth is the existence within the epidermis of a latent capacity to develop into several organisms in wildly different forms. So we're going to talk about some of the more um, modern uh, understanding of that. Um, but the idea that within the insect itself is the latent capacity to be an egg, to be a larval form, uh, to be a pupil form, and then to be a remarkably different adult form 
um, is what he realized in 1934. So nothing is coming in um, uh, that suddenly allows the insect to have wings, um, that the uh, potential was always there. And now, of course, we understand this a lot better from the genetic side, um, where in 1934, his um, uh, um, uh, primary um, discovery was the uh, hormonal titers that existed that controlled metamorphosis. And we're going to actually go into those in, in pretty great detail. So um, that's pretty exciting. So insect reproduction, um, insects have the gamut of uh, uh, reproductive uh, capacities. And um, um, uh, they have males and females, some insects are hermaphrodites. Um, some insects actually have reduced genitalia and do not reproduce at all. Um, uh, a good example of those would be worker ants or the, um, the worker casts in the termite colonies. Um, some uh, have uh, large groups of very successful organisms that we talked about, like aphidae, um, or have asexual parthenogenesis, um, where offsprings develop from unfertilized eggs. Um, but the primary mode is still sexual reproduction um, in the um, in insecta, um, and the transfer of uh, the sperm uh, to the egg is done in a wide variety of ways. Um, here are some examples of uh, insect copulation that um, uh, one here are these odonates, these damselflies, where um, uh, he is actually uh, um, uh, holding on to her um, in, in Mid, this is usually occurring in mid-flight. Um, this is the transfer in an orthopteran of a spermatheca. Um, so the copulation um, is actually uh, external, where the female accepts a sperm package uh, from the male. Um, and then um, I'm sure everyone has seen this running around at some point. Um, there copulation can happen very quickly, um, but often happens, like in this case, it can be quite a quick um, exchange, um, but a lot of times it actually happens over extended periods of time uh, with the, uh, the mated pair actually being bonded for in insect life uh, for forever, for a really long time, um, you know, a couple hours or a day, and um, thereby preventing the uh, copulation by potentially preventing the copulation uh, by competitors. Um, one of the, and uh, Adam may have already talked about this, um, but one, there's some other uh, sort of weird examples. One of them is uh, in, this is a bed bug, um, a sinicid, and it's, uh, they reproduce by traumatic insemination, um, where the female, as seen here, um, actually does not have a genital opening, um, but the male uh, punctures one in her abdomen and um, uh, deposited, deposits sperm uh, by the developing ovaries. Um, it's as odd as this may be, this has evolved several times um, in insects. Uh, so Strepsiptera, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, um, are also the entire order, um, although there's not that many species in that order, um, uh, do traumatic insemination for reproduction. And, you know, you must, I mean, I'm amused, I wonder, like, why, how is this developed? What, what possibly could be advantageous um, about this? Um, not the best image, but uh, this is actually a very beautiful uh, Saturnid moth um, uh, that color is real, the rosy and, and yellow. Um, but finding a mate, so if you're going to have sexual reproduction and you're small, um, uh, finding a mate is a very difficult 
uh, task or seemingly an immense task. And um, uh, as many of you talked about on your first exam, the evolution of wings um, uh, 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 allows for the uh, adult insects, the wings are only present in the adults, uh, to move um, greater distances. And part of the reason for this movement, or one of the advantages of this ability to move at those greater distances, is actually seeking a mate. Um, adult insects, uh, if you look on average across all of Insecta, um, have a shorter life. Their, their lifespan is largely as a larva, um, and um, a shorter amount of time in their life is actually an adult. And um, so it is thought that the adult's primary purpose is to actually produce, be the final phase and produce this next uh, generation. And there's lots of interesting um, uh, um, uh, modifications in order in the, to the body of insects and to their sensory capabilities, particularly around reproduction. So not only the wings um, for flight, um, if you think about it as a means to disperse in order to find mates, but in this picture of this great moth, um, this is a male and you see how it has these uh, very feathery antennae and uh, those feathery antennae um, are highly chemoreceptive um, where they can pick up molecules of pheromones and hormones from the female of their species at great distances. Um, and so this is the final larval stage, um, the wandering stage. Um, it's a really fun, uh, there's a lot of videos online of a uh, wandering larva. Um, this is a uh, um, manduka larva, tomato, hornworm. And um, normally they're not on the ground wandering around, um, but it's actually looking for a nice place to pupate. Um, it's uh, titers of juvenile hormone and ecdysone have said it is time to pupate. They pupate underground. They normally are on plants feeding and eating as much as possible, um, but the body has started to reorganize itself um, and it's time to find a good spot to burrow into the ground. and. Um, so it's come down from the plant and it's wandering around to try to find a nice soft bit of soil to, uh, to burrow down into. And in the videos, you can see that this uh, um, structure along its back is starting to pump. It's really making this uh, uh, sort of pumping motion. Um, and that pumping motion is um, where the tissues of the body are starting to reorganize themselves. Um, uh, within the tissues of the body. And um, so this happens, even begins to happen um, as the, the larva is still a larva. And then finally, um, pupation occurs um, and some of the old exoskeleton um, uh, is, can be found a lot of times at the base of the larva, the base of the pupa. Um, and so this is um, a larva of one of these manduka. Here you have a manduka where it's just transformed and then um, it's removed its old skeleton and it's starting to harden into that pupil uh, form. And then it's finally in its pupil form. And in the wild, in its wild state, um, this would actually be underground. So um, it's a pretty hard uh, pupa that's found, uh, found underground. Um, and I think with that, um, I'm going to say that before we talk more about pupae, um, that we're going to uh, call it for the day because we are now at 1227. Um, so this lecture will be finished on Monday. Um, and I just want to check really quickly to make sure we covered everything that might be on the quiz. If not, um, I can adjust that quiz, not to worry. 
So let me just check really quick. Because I'm sure that that would be a question because we didn't quite finish the... Yep, we're good. Yep, so we, we covered everything um, that's on the quiz, even though we didn't quite finish the lecture for today. So um, have a great uh, weekend, and um, I will see everyone on Monday. And remember, I have office hours today, too, um, if uh, you want to come by. Oh, I'll come by just to watch, just to say hi. She doesn't realize that she left the video on. She left the video on. I know. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she doesn't realize that she's still on the video. I know. And we're still in the room. I also am pretty sure that she doesn't know we're in her class. No. She doesn't know. Watching her. We're too small. Listening to how she talks about insects. I am an insect. I am an insect. Oh. I am an insect. I didn't take the test today. Nor the nor quiz. Nor did I take the quiz. That would give me away. But I do sit in the class. I am an insect. And listen to how she talks about us. From egg to egg. Along with a bunch egg. of your friends. It wasn't so bad. It was only a few days ago. From egg to egg. What do you say? I am an insect. She doesn't realize she left the video on. From egg to egg. She's still there. Unaware that we're watching. We're all watching. I was trying to let her know through some taps on the leg earlier, but I think she just thought something bit her. Did you bite her? Did you bite her? Maybe one day we'll be friends. But until then, I'm just going to have to sit back and watch the lectures. Oh, she might be realizing that she left the video on. She, she left, left the, the video, video on. on.